Thank you. Hi everybody, um, welcome to this session. My name's Emma and I'm a Student Recruitment Officer here at Manchester Metropolitan University. Um, and today we'll be looking at degree apprenticeships, so what they are, how you apply and uh, where you can find them as well. So, just to give you a little bit of background about us here at Manchester Met, um, we currently have over two and a half thousand apprentices on our books that are working with um, around 600 employers. So some big name companies and some smaller SMEs as well. Um, we have got loads of things that we're really proud of, as you can see on this screen. Um, but one of the uh, ones that I did want to point out to you today is that we have currently 110 different apprentices that have been recognised at both regional and national award level as well. So um, they seem to be having a great time on our courses and we're really proud of what they're going on to do in the workplace. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention quickly was that we are, have been rated the top university in the UK for degree apprenticeships. Uh, so again, something that we're really, really proud of. And it makes my job of telling everybody how great we are a little bit easier because I've got some evidence to back it up. So that was rated for by our apprentices. So I'm sure you know already, but there are different levels of apprenticeships and universities tend to focus on the two uh, that you can see here in pink. So uh, the higher level apprenticeships, which are the equivalent of doing your first two years at university um, or otherwise known as a foundation degree. Or you might uh, know things like HNC, HND, and they tend to be the equivalent of uh, the higher level apprenticeships. What we focus on at Manchester Met is the degree level apprenticeships. Um, and at the end of that, you come out with a, a degree, the same as you would do if you did an undergraduate course. Um, and because of that, we do look for university requirements that are quite similar to that of undergraduate courses as well. So there's quite a lot um, to take in with apprenticeships. So we are gonna be focusing predominantly with these degree apprenticeships today. So in terms of what they are, as the name suggests, you get a degree at the same time as um, completing an apprenticeship as well. So how that works is you're in full-time employment and that works out at around 80% of your time. And then the remainder of your time you spend doing your degree as well. At the end of this, you do get um, an apprenticeship as well. So the apprenticeship, um, to complete it really, you have to meet industry standards. So they're set out um, and you have to meet each one of those standards in order to pass the apprenticeship side of your degree apprenticeship. So not only do you come out with loads of work experience and a degree, you also get that apprenticeship as well. Um, so it works out quite well with our students. Uh, about 92% of them end up with a distinction or a merit in their endpoint assessment, which um, measures how well that they've uh, met those industry standards as well. So they're quite an exciting opportunity. I would say they're quite different to going off to university and doing an undergraduate degree because obviously you're in the workplace, but definitely another opportunity for you if you are interested in uh, gaining a degree level qualification. So as a national picture, this is what it looks like. Um, degree apprenticeships were brought in um, to try and bring new um, talent into different industries. So these are the industries really that they've taken off in. Uh, so anything from buildings and surveying through to engineering to digital marketing and quite a few different courses in between as well. Typically, they are around four year programmes. Um, so that means that alongside your workplace, you will take around four years to get that degree. Some can take longer, um, some can be sped up as well, but the majority are four year programmes. Um, you're looking at entry level requirements of around 104 UCAS points. So if you're doing A levels, that's the equiv equivalent of BCC. Uh, and above, if you're doing um, BTEC, you're looking at distinction, merit, merit, and above as well. And as they're to do with education, we do look at your English and Maths GCSE at level four and above to get in. You can have an option to do functional skills, but not everywhere offers this alongside your degree apprenticeship. But majority would say that you'd need these qualifications uh, before you start your apprenticeship. So in terms of the benefits of degree apprenticeships, before we get onto this, I will um, say that, as I've already mentioned, the student life experience is a lot different to going off and doing an undergraduate degree, because obviously you're spending the majority of your time in that workplace. The other thing to mention is that they are quite competitive as well. So um, 
some of the application processes can be quite lengthy and you could be up against a lot of competition as well. So you can help counteract that by having a great CV and cover letter that you can adapt to each job that you're applying for um, and, you know, being really resilient because sometimes you have to apply to quite a few degree apprenticeships uh, before you're successful. So the benefits are that there aren't any tuition fees attached because they're paid for by a government levy. Uh, you do get a paid salary as well. So here we don't work with anyone that offers less than £16,000 as a starting salary. However, some of them go up to around 22000 as a starting salary. So pretty decent for a college um, leaver. You do obviously get lots of significant work experience because you're in the workplace for such a long time and that will help you with your learning as well. So if you learn by doing things, a degree apprenticeship could be the right option for you um, because whatever you're doing in the workplace will help you at university and understanding the theoretical knowledge behind that. And again, whatever you're doing at uni, you can apply to the work that you're doing in the workplace. So there are great opportunities to help you understand your learning a little bit more. And you can get really good opportunities for fast career progression as well. So I think it's around 76% of our apprentices um, have been given a pay increase or um, a promotion before they've even completed their degree. So there are great opportunities for people that are really keen on getting into the world of work. In terms of support, the biggest form of uh, support really for you as an apprentice is your fellow apprentices. So you'll see in a, in a few slides time all of our programmes that are open to college uh, leavers. But you might all be working at different companies, but you will remain with the same people for that full four years on the university side of things as well. And what that does is build a really good network of support for you to rely on um, if you're not understanding something or you want to bounce ideas off people. Um, and because they work at all different companies, it's a great opportunity to learn how other people that are on your course that might be working in a different sector, for example, um, would utilise the knowledge that you're using at university. So it's a really good uh, networking opportunity and gives you a really good understanding of how uh, theories can be applied in lots of different uh, contexts. Um, you also get designated lecturers and programme leaders as well. And you are members of the student union and the association of apprentices as well. So some companies are really good and they'll let you go off playing sport, for example, for your university. Others might, might not have that opportunity. So we do work quite closely with the association of apprentices uh, to be able to provide that social aspect of university a little bit more as well. The student union, as well as doing all the fun stuff, do have a responsibility for the students' welfare, as well as the university does, um, and also project that student voice up to senior management team as well. So you'll have access to all of those parts of it, um, and you can be quite active members of those uh, student unions as well. You also get a skills coach, and these are a little bit like the pastoral um, support team at school or college, so they will look after you. They'll meet regularly with your workplace mentor, and they'll just make sure that you're on track with all of the different things that you need to do. So they'll make sure you're attending lectures, they'll make sure you're completing work to a high standard, and they'll make sure that you're getting on well in the workplace and evidencing all of those key skills, knowledges, behaviours that are um, expected to be met to pass your apprenticeship as well. The workplace mentor is there to support you in the workplace. So in the bigger companies, this could be your immediate team leader. In the smaller companies, it could even be the managing director and they're responsible for making sure that um, you, you're getting on great in the workplace. They're there if you have any questions or queries and they'll give you all the work that you need to do as well. And as I said, they liaise quite closely with your skills coaches so they can address anything that you might need answers to or uh, you might be struggling with or you're doing really well at. So. There's a lot of support in place to help you to thrive in the workplace, really, and do really well in your degree apprenticeship. <clears throat> so in terms of the benefits of degree apprenticeships, you do attend university, um, and this varies depending on which programme you're on. I would say the majority are on around 25 days per year. So that could be virtually or it could be in person. Uh, one of our courses, uh, they're only in for one week in person of the whole year uh, because their companies are based all across the UK so um, they don't it's not unfair for us to ask them to come in once a week so they come in and do a massive residential um, for one week of the year but they'll still come in uh, online uh, lessons as well 
you do get a combination of assignments and work-based projects. Um, there are some tests that might be involved, so I can't promise that there won't be any at all, but some courses will ask you to, to complete tests as well. But the majority of your work will be based around what you're doing in the workplace and applying that theoretical knowledge from uni into that as well. And you do get a minimum of six hours off the job time allocated by the employer during the week. Uh, so during university weeks, that will be your university time. At other points of the year, it could be to do your work that's due in or to attend conferences and things like that. But again, it's programme dependent. So in terms of our courses, um, if you did go onto our website, which is on the, the screen there, you might see that we have around 17 different courses um, on there. However, some of them do require you to have additional um, work experience. So these ones here on the screen are um, applicable to people that are leaving college. So you can apply for any of these, but you don't apply to the university with these. You apply directly to the employer. So these are the programmes that we have. And what we will do, we'll advertise the employer's vacancies. And this is the pathways that you would take as your degree with them. But you, as I said, your application goes directly to the employer. So chartered management is more about people management. And at the end of that one, you do get membership of CMI, so the Chartered Management Institute. The creative ones, we've got lots of different creative design and digital um, offerings. But just to point out, just because you're doing something like digital marketing doesn't mean that you're necessarily working for a digital marketing team, uh, digital marketing company, sorry. That would just be your responsibility within um, the industry that you're working in. So it could be that you're doing that with a retailer or a bank or an online um vendor but it just depends really but that will be your role within the company uh, digital and tech solutions has four different pathways including things like software engineering data analysis and cyber security and then the healthcare one it might ask for additional entry requirements you're looking at around 120 points for that one and the lab science ones do ask for specific a levels or um, b techs as well so uh, the chemical science one will ask for you to have chemistry or applied science and the bioscience one will ask you to have biology or applied science or something uh, similar to that as well but some really great opportunities working with some really great companies as well in terms of career paths um the old adage of um, an apprenticeship being making cups of tea and photocopying and things like that isn't correct. Some of our apprentices are doing really key work um, for their companies and are providing a really good service um, to the users that are using those companies as well. So, for example, we've got Harris, who's at Lloyd's TSB, and he's responsible for a programme uh, that is going to be uh, rolled out globally uh, to help the um, company save a little bit of money as well. So you're not sat at sat in the corner doing nothing you're getting involved in some really exciting projects i'm not going to read through all of these career paths but you can see that they're really good interesting jobs and they're probably quite well paid as well so we're really proud of what our apprentices go on to do and these are just some of the ideas um that you could go on to do after you've completed your apprenticeship Okay, so these are just some of the employers um, that we work with. So some big name companies on there. So Amazon, BBC, Booking.com. We do also work with a lot of SMEs as well. And again, just like when you're looking at universities or colleges and you're thinking about which one would suit you best, the same works um, in terms of apprenticeships as well. So basically, all of these uh, will have different um, apprenticeship routes within them, and you apply directly to these companies. So obviously, I can't fit all 600 onto a slide, but you get an idea of some of the names that we work with. Um, and like I said, our apprentices are getting up to some really exciting things as well. Just to make you aware that you will um, have a longer apprenticeship process or a more rigorous one, really, for the big name companies. So again, something to think about when you are applying to apprenticeships, whether you want to apply for just big names or whether you're happy to go to um, smaller and medium sized companies. And there isn't a one size fits all or a right answer. It's all about you doing, um, you know, what you need to do in order um, to find the right apprenticeship for you. And like I said, we do suggest that you apply to as many of these as you possibly can. In terms of searching for vacancies, unlike UCAS and the um, application process in general um, for undergraduate courses, there isn't a one-stop shop. Um, a lot of people use different uh, platforms in order to search for vacancies. 
So UCAS, uh, I'll show you these in a bit more detail in a second, but UCAS in the last month or two have come up with a really good degree apprenticeship hub. Um, so you can go onto there and put some search criteria in and it'll come up with all of that. Um, Unifrog is really good. I know a lot of colleges are using that to help with things like personal statements. So you're probably familiar with how that website looks. Not going to uni as well, we'll advertise some. But all of these websites on this slide will give you some really great um, information, advice and guidance on degree apprenticeship. So definitely worth looking at all of these websites. In terms of setting alerts up, we would definitely recommend that you set up alerts. So the peak time for vacancies for degree apprenticeships is any time from now uh, through until April next year for a September, October start um, in 2024. So the bottom left picture there, you can see where it says search for apprenticeships, graduate jobs and internships is where that's the UCAS uh, page really. So you can put in all your filters there and set up alerts. So as soon as something comes up that takes your fancy or meets the criteria that you've popped in, then um, you will get emailed across. So once you've started your search, the top left picture there will tell you all about the different um, uh, vacancies available to you. So this one's looking at uh, level three, level two opportunities. I would say if you are in college, you should be looking at at least the higher level apprenticeships and, and degree level apprenticeships, and you can set your filters accordingly for that as well. Uh, the gov.uk website is a, is a really good place to search as well, but just be prepared that this will have every level of apprenticeship on it. So at peak time, there can be thousands of uh, vacancies on this website. What I would say, again, set up that alert. So as soon as one that fits your criteria comes up, it'll come straight across to your email address. Um, and you can start to apply for those as well. And we have a similar thing with uh, our website as well. So if any of our employers have vacancies up, um, we will advertise them. But again, just to stress that you will apply directly to the employer as well. At the minute, I think there's about seven or eight different apprenticeships on there for you to apply for. Last week, there was only three. So as I'm, I'm saying, they do snowball from now onwards. So I would say the bigger companies tend to go a little bit earlier than the smaller companies but definitely set up those alerts and then it just helps you um, to not have to check all of these different websites for vacancies that suit your criteria. So in terms of the application process, <clears throat> we do recommend that you apply for degree apprenticeships alongside applying to universities. So meet all the deadlines that college um, that are giving you basically for your UCAS application um, so that you can be sat on all of those offers. And then at the same time, as and when these jobs come out, please just apply for as many as you possibly can. I think I've only ever met one apprentice that's applied for one and got one straight away. Uh, the rest of them have had to apply for 10 or 15 and you've got to be quite resilient with it because um, some companies might not reply to you if you've been unsuccessful. Some might not even offer you an interview, but it's all about being persistent and keeping on at it. And to do that, it's all about having your good CV written and tailored to each opportunity that you're applying for. And the same with the CV as well. In terms of the application process in general, you will definitely have to do a CV or online application, which is submitted directly to the employer and an interview as well. So that's either online or in person. The rest of these are just examples of what you could be asked to do. So especially with the bigger companies, I would say that you're looking at doing quite a few different stages of uh, application before you even offered something. So a telephone interview could be used by employees to filter out initial applications. So here they're looking at why you want to work for that company and why you want to do that specific apprenticeship. You might be given a test or an intro exercise to do. And we're finding that a lot of employers are doing this um, as part of their application process. So it could be a maths or English test, it could be a psychometric test, or it could be something like an intro exercise. So it could be that you're given three emails with three different problems on, and you have to um, sort of assess them and see which order you'd reply to them. And the assessment center, although it sounds a little bit daunting, I think are a brilliant opportunity for apprentices to showcase all of those skills that you've got. So apprenticeship employers are really looking for people that know exactly how to use all of their software that they use or to know all their policies and procedures. But they're looking at all the things that they can't teach you. So they're looking for your potential, things like time management, leadership, problem solving, um, teamwork, all of these things that you're doing on a daily basis. 
Um, that's the type of thing that employers are looking for. And assessment centres give, give you a great opportunity to showcase them. You'll be asked to do things like um, individual exercises. You might even be asked to do a presentation. Um, you'll be doing group work. They even watch you over lunchtime as well to see how you're networking with people. And they'll all assign you um, scores on based on a matrix. So everybody will be, a, a, sorry, sort of assessed on the same criteria so it won't be biased in any way but assessment centers are a great tool if you do get inv invited to one of them then see it as a great opportunity rather than something to be worried about as part of that you could be invited to interview as part of that assessment center day but a lot of employers will um let you go home have a bit of a rest and then they might invite you back uh, to do an interview either online or in person at a later date as well so the reason I'm telling you this is that not every employer will do every stage and it can vary depending on the uh, employer as well. But just to make you aware that this could happen and it could be quite a lengthy process. So it is quite time consuming, but the payoff at the end is really brilliant. So just keep at it and be resilient with all of these different um, application processes that you might be asked to do. In terms of applying, uh, obviously this says for Manchester Met because I work here, but it would be quite similar wherever you're looking uh, to go so definitely register for those alerts on UCAS um, on our website and on the gov.uk one and that just makes your life a little bit easier visit our website and visit employer websites and employer well websites are a great source of information so not only will they tell you about the vacancies that they have coming up but they'll also give you loads of information for you to put into your CV and to your uh, application as well. So I know recently I was sat with someone who's applying for a degree apprenticeship with Unilever. They were asked to submit a CV and cover letter, um, which they did. And then they were asked questions about the company and why they want to work for that company and why that um, apprenticeship in particular. And the employer website um, helps you to answer questions like that because you can see how you're going to fit in with that company's uh, values, um, with their uh, projections for what's to come, um, for maybe their aims, you can see who the competitors are, who their um, competition is, all of that type of thing is there on the website. So it's really great wealth of information to, for you to put into your application process. Um, vacancy time, as I've already said, is between November and April. So you'd need to be really on it in terms of applications, because especially coming into April time where you might be, um, you know, finalising your end of uh, year work and things like that, it can be quite a busy time. So the more prepared you are, the better. Um, apply for them. So processes vary, as we've already said, but refer to that slide as and when you can. Uh, you might also have to attend that assessment centre and definitely um, have an interview in some format as well. So if you're successful or they really want you for your their apprenticeship, um, that's great. And that's where you'll set out um, your apprenticeship. They'll sign, get you to sign a contract um, and they'll set out the terms of the apprenticeship. So what you can expect from them and what they'll expect of you. Usually this is based on your UCAS uh, grades as well. So what I would say is definitely keep going with your UCAS applications and apply to these as and when, because on results day, um, if you do really well, that's brilliant. You're definitely going to be getting onto that degree apprenticeship if you've been offered it. If you don't get the grades that you meet, some of our employers will definitely um, give you like another option as uh, they might offer you a higher level apprenticeship rather than a degree level apprenticeship. Some are quite cutthroat, so if you don't meet the entry criteria that they've asked for, they might just cut you off and offer it to somebody else. So on results day, we don't want you to be left with nothing. So as long as you're sat on those university offers, it means at least you've got something. If you don't go through UCAS until that point, it means that there's a rush for you to get your application in um, and to see whether there's uh, still places available. If you have sat on those offers and you've been offered your degree apprenticeship because you've done really well, then I would say it's just a matter of clicking a button to withdraw from the university places and you don't want to be in a position where you're left with nothing. So make sure that you're doing dual applications with it as well. Once that you have um, signed your contract, we work quite closely with the employers to get you onboarded with us um, so that we will send you... Um, a university application form and that's submitted directly to us not through UCAS um, and this is kind of like a shorter version of the UCAS form so we'll ask for a personal statement and loads of different bits of information uh, about yourself as well that usually happens in the July August time of uh, before you start in September and then in September 
you will start your uh, course with us as well. So it could be that you start your job on the 1st of September, but you don't meet your induction um, or start your apprenticeship until the end of September, early October as well. So it could be that you start your job before you start your apprenticeship. But in both situations, you will be given um, an induction week where you get to come and see us, you get to meet the uh, skills coaches, you get to meet your programme leaders, and most importantly, you get to see all the other apprentices and uh, start forming your networks with them as well. So it is quite a lengthy process, but again, top tips would be to apply <clears throat> to as many degree apprenticeships as you possibly can and do it alongside UCAS and definitely set up those alerts uh, as and when you can so that you're not missing out on any opportunities that might come your way. But yeah, if anybody's got any questions, I'm happy to help you. If you want to email me, uh, that's brilliant. And you can just email apprenticeships at mmu.ac.uk. But I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have. Hi, Emma. I think there was only one in the chat, but I think you already answered it about how where to apply, where to look to apply. So I think you've already answered that one in your, your presentation. Yeah, that's brilliant. Yeah, so definitely just remember that you apply directly to the employer. So although we'll highlight our employer's vacancies, it will always take you over to their website. So it's more like applying for a job rather than it is, um, you know, like doing a UCAS application. In terms of time management, I've just seen the question, thanks Rebecca for that. I would say that having a CV ready to go, that you can just tailor little bits to, to meet the job description that they're asking for or the personal specification is definitely like the way to go. So you've got that template ready and you can just insert company information and how you meet that as well. So a good way to start that is thinking about all the skills that you've got and where you're getting them from as well. So it might be, um, subject specific ones from the courses that you're doing at a uh, school or college it could be um more generally so if you're part of a sports team if you're um a school representative or anything like that where you're gaining skills just start to think of a map around uh, that type of thing as well in terms of interviews i would say a great thing to start looking at is the star technique so situation task action and results this is all on google by the way so you can find information about that and basically that format format is really good for answering competency-based questions so tell us of a time where you've led a team or worked as part of a team or problem solved you can use that structure to be able to um, have interview answers ready to questions as well so you can use that and basically rehearse it so as and when applications uh, come in and you might be invited um, to interview then at least you know you've got some answers ready and just start to research courses as well and uh, job opportunities because the research is really key to this uh, employers really want someone that's going to fit into their company and have shown interest in their company as well and don't be afraid to reach out to people either on LinkedIn or just via their company's website um, and see when their vacancies are coming up but it's all about having things ready to go so your CV ready that you can just tailor to each job application I think is probably the best bit of advice but I know it comes at a difficult time so um there's not much more I can do about that in terms of job vacancies, but definitely have that CV ready, have a cover letter ready that you can tailor to each uh, job opportunity, make sure it, all the spelling and grammar and everything's correct on that, and then you can just insert information as and when, and definitely look at that STAR technique as well in a, to be able to answer interview questions well. It gives you just a really nice structure to set the scene, tell us what the task was, what you did to do uh, to reach the goal that you were aiming for, um, and and then what that resulted in as well. So, yeah, I'm really sorry that we can't, you do have to apply for quite a few different apprenticeships, really, but just be persistent with it and try and apply to as many as you possibly can and don't narrow yourself down to one specific company or apprenticeship that you might want to do. Be quite open to things as well because quite a lot of the courses that we offer might have bits where they overlap as well. So don't narrow your choices down too much, but just be as prepared as you possibly can and set those alerts up. That's great, Emma. I think that was so much good information there. Um, if there's not any other questions, I think we're just about time anyway. Okay, Brill. Yeah. Well, thank you, everybody. 
Thanks, Emma. Thanks so much. I'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.